Thanks for joining In the Trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics. And today, we're in the beautiful studios First Star Logistics built in our brand spanking new building. First Star Logistics takes care of their people. We can vouch for that. Dave Burke and I, we can vouch for that big time. So, let's talk about preseason game number one. Started the game off, I thought, very, very well. The number ones came out there. Uh, and I thought the offensive line and skill players, Joe Burrow in particular, really were in a pretty good rhythm. I thought that they, uh, they took control of the line of scrimmage, took control of the tempo, took control of the game, 12 plays, over 70 yards for a touchdown, aided immeasurably by a third and 17 pass interference penalty against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that kept the drive alive for a touchdown, foreshadowing what was to come later in the football game. Huge fourth down pass interference penalty on the Cincinnati Bengals that kept the drive alive for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, allowed them to score a touchdown. But it was 17-14 football game. Um, you know, I thought the off the, the first group of the offensive linemen, off, offensive linemen did a pretty good job handling the stunts. There were some line stunts in there. Guys did a decent job. You know, technique can always be cleaned up. That's always the case in the first preseason game. Technique can kind of fall apart a little bit. You know, you you uh, you get in that first heat of the battle and and uh, you haven't taken as many reps as you're going to during the course of the season and does, the muscle memory factors lost a little bit and you might um, kind of go back to some old habits but I think all in all they played well and Mims I think he's the only young offensive lineman that met expectations and his expectations are high and I thought he played well I mean I thought he did a pretty darn good job now Kirkland Lee some of these guys that I, I wanted to see I, I'm not sure that they lived up to my expectations. Maybe my expectations were too high. Uh, maybe it's just first preseason game, and uh, they're going to play a lot better. Uh, time will tell on that. But I do think that after that number one group went out, when they went on a 12-play, 73-yard, I think it was, touchdown drive, um, they struggled. I mean, you know, in, in the next uh, in the next few drives after that uh, that touchdown drive, on the eight possessions, first eight possessions, the touchdown drive, by three and outs, an interception, and a missed field goal. Now, the missed field goal is 58 yards, but, you know, still never get back into a rhythm. The next, uh, the younger group of offensive linemen did not play, obviously, as well. Um, and you got to give, you know, Tampa Bay is a good defensive football team. Todd Bowles is a defensive marvel as a head coach, and he's his own defensive coordinator, and he gets his guys to play pretty hard. Bottom line is, um, as we know, who – played or observed the game for a long time. If you control the line of scrimmage, you usually control the football game. If you do well in the trenches, like we're talking here in the trenches, if you do well in the trenches at the line of scrimmage, I don't care if it's peewee football, high school football, college football, and National Football League, the guys that do a better job at the line of scrimmage and control that phase of it usually win the football game. And that's pretty much what happened. And, and the tail of the tape, is in the running game. I mean, Tampa Bay rushed it 31 times for 137 yards and two touchdowns on the ground. That's how, that's how they scored their two touchdowns. They had nine runs of five yards or more, including a 26-yard uh, jaunt uh, by Tucker, the rookie running back out of Syracuse. Uh, that was the longest run of the day. They uh, he, he ended up carrying the ball 10 times for 68 yards, almost seven yards per rush. And then you take a look at the at the Cincinnati Bengals running attack, 13 carries, 36 yards. Their leading rusher was Brown with uh, 10 yards on five carries. <laughs> I mean, that they, they struggled. Their longest run of the night was a seven-yard carry. So the Tampa Bay Buccaneers ran the football more consistently, more effectively. They ran it 18 more times. I mean, they, they more than doubled the Bengals' attempts on the ground. That tells you that they – controlled the line of scrimmage, the coaches had confidence in it, and they decided to go that route. And then play action pass, naked bootlegs. They just run that outside zone, naked bootleg away from it, and it just that would go to the tight end, and it was it was killing the, the Bengals, you know, and uh, Trask goes 12 for 20 for 144 yards uh, off of that, uh, you know, that running game with that naked bootleg stuff. He was effective. He did throw an interception. Uh, both teams did turn it over with an interception. In terms of uh, the passing game, the Cincinnati Bengals, we talked about how well Joe Burrow played on that first drive, five for seven for 51 yards and a touchdown. And he and T. Higgins, I mean, he decided 
All right, he does a double move. And I'm going to – two guys that are there as defenders, but I trust T. And he put it up there. T almost made a great play on it. Defensive back got his hand in there and and uh, and pulled it away. But it was it was there for a touchdown. I mean, Joe threw a, a, a perfect ball. I mean, it landed perfectly for the potential uh, big play score. And, you know, he, he trusts the fact that T Higgins, if he doesn't catch the football, the other guys won't. So he made that, uh, he made that throw. Would he make it in an AFC championship game? I don't know. Probably not. He probably would go uh, somewhere else, but he, uh, and then he comes back and throws a touchdown pass to T Higgins and T makes a guy miss big guy that he is and, and scores for the Bengals. Um, uh, you know, and then and then offensively, it just it it stagnated. There's there's no question about it. Things didn't work out for uh, for Jake Browning, uh, you know, as as well as he wanted it to. Obviously, he went ten for eighteen, fifty two yards with an interception. Uh, Woodside came into the football game though and gave him a little bit of a spark. He went eight for twelve, hundred and forty nine yards, and threw a touchdown pass. Obviously, another guy that you got to talk about is is Jermaine Burton. Burton, <laughs> three catches for eighty two yards. His last two catches, 37 and 38 yards, 75 yards on two receptions. And there were two consecutive throws by Logan Woodside. One of them went for a touchdown uh, to Jermaine Burton. Then he followed it up with another 38 yard, uh, another 38 yard completion. So pretty, pretty good, you know. And uh, one of the rookie tight ends, McLaughlin, had a, uh, a 23 yard reception. Um, Collins had a, uh, a 20, 21 yard catch. So they did have some explosives. They did have some big plays in the passing game, but you got to get that running game going. And I know that they're they're disappointed that they didn't get that running game going offensively. Defensively, my first star logistics in the trenches player of the game was Travis Bell, uh, number fifty three in your program. He's six one, three hundred five pounds, maybe six <laughs> one. I'm thinking six feet, but I mean. He is like a shot put with legs, man. He gets under your pads, low center of gravity. He was inverting the line of scrimmage. Um, he made three tackles, I think it was, plus a sack. He uh, was bull rushing the guard. The guard couldn't handle him, and he got a sack off of that bull rush. He was he was causing problems uh, with penetration in the pocket and up the middle. Quarterback couldn't step up. That makes it a lot easier for the edge pressure to get there. And I thought that he played a uh, – he played a very, very solid football game. I think the Bengals had three sacks on the night, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I, Travis Bell defensively stuck out to me. Josh Newton, who we talked about. you darn Tootin. You love Josh Newton. Um, Josh Fig Newton, nicknamed Fig. This guy, he has an interception in the football game. He did a good job. He's been blanketing people all during training camp. And he got the wind knocked out of him. Uh, and, you know, they took him in the, in the tent. We thought initially maybe he had a little bit Bell rung a little bit, but uh, it ends up being the wind knocked out of him. They want to make sure that you don't have any problems with your chest area and all that sort of thing when you take a shot like that. Um, and he came back in the football game and made an interception shortly thereafter. We talked about uh, before the game that probably a guy that uh, quarterback, whoever it would be, would be looking for when he came into the football game was Tanner Hudson. And, man, Tanner Hudson ran some good routes. I mean, he showed on one, ran a route, came back to the football. All you young players are watching the football game. Don't wait for the ball. Come back and get the football. Tanner Hudson is somebody that every quarterback knows they can count on, and he does everything he has to do to be a factor and make the football team every year. So I thought, I thought uh, you know, he, he stepped up and, and, and played a little bit. You know, the limited time he played, he, I thought he played well. Got to give Dax Hill kudos. Dax Hill, I thought, did a good job at the cornerback position on the edge. He got his hand on a couple of footballs. He almost picked one off. It, uh, they went to replay on it, and it was, it was overruled. So, you know, I thought he showed some things. He showed his athleticism. Um, you know, the, the instincts are something that you're working on. Uh, but, but this guy has every single trait you need to be big time in the back end. There's no, no doubt about it. So the running game, okay. What was the problem in the running game defensively? Were guys not taking care of gap control responsibilities and freelancing a little bit? It's like, oh, I got to go try to make this play. Oh, boy, as soon as you vacate your gap, here they come. Or was it just getting moved out of the gap? And I saw both. You know, I think I did see 
not taking not taking uh, care of your GAC control responsibilities, everybody doing their job and not trying to do your job plus a little bit of somebody else's. Can't be doing that. And then I did see on some of those double teams, boy, guys were washed out of there. And, you know, so you get you got to rectify that problem. You can't let people control the game on the ground like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And that was a problem last year for the Bengals defense. They had issues with the running game and had issues with the running game right up the gut. Um, and the uh, the rookie running back out of Syracuse uh, had on on one of his uh, one of his carries. I know he had he had ten for sixty eight. He had a twenty six yard rush that was right up the gut, you know. And it's like oof. So um, and, and again, two rushing touchdowns. It, the the biggest thing I think that came out of this football game is in the preseason. You hope that you get all the situations covered, situational football. Well. Cincinnati Bengals had red zone offensive snaps. They had to defend the red zone defensively. They had a four down stop in the red zone defensively. So th- what did that do? That put the Bengals offense back at the three yard line. Now that's another situational football coming out of, off your own goal line. You know, when you're backed up, move the football, at least flip the field. Don't go three and out and give them great field position, you know, only a half a field to negotiate and navigate to score. The Bengals drove the football, and it was punted and punted into the end zone. Uh, but, you know, they flipped the field. They started at their own three-yard line. And they give the ball back at the 20. That's pretty good. And if it had been punted a little bit better and uh, they would be downed inside the 10-yard line, that would have been phenomenal. So you had that. Um, you, you had a lot of situational stuff that the – that the uh, coaches look to see and, and, and teach off that tape. You know, boy, we not only had, you know, the normal things you have during the course of a football game, but a lot of situational football cropped up. And third down uh, wasn't very good. The Bengals weren't very good on third down. Uh, in the first, uh, in the beginning of the football game, Tampa Bay was like, I think, four for eight uh, to start the football game on third down. Uh, and then they 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 cooled off, and and in the first half they were four for eight, and the early stages of the second half, or maybe it was from the entire second half, they went two for eight. So they, you know m- made a little bit of adjustment, did a little bit better job. The Bengals though three for ten on third down in their first uh, ten attempts, which is not going to cut it. You need to do a a better job than that. So um, you know <laughs> red zone, uh, low red zone. Snaps, the two-minute drill for the offense, two-minute drill for the defense, four-minute drill for the defense, um, goal line stand for the defense. I, a lot of, lot of things that, uh, that are going to be good teaching uh, moments for the, for the coaching staff to, to work with. And preseason game number one now in the books didn't look like any major injuries. I, I, you know, there was not only did, did – uh, uh, Josh Newton get the wind knocked out of him. Dejon Anthony get smacked in the nose. They were having a little bit of difficulty getting that nose to stop bleeding. He went into the tent, I think, to make sure, you know, that uh, he didn't have any fractures or or anything, uh, you know, like that. So um, you know, those those are all precautionary things. You you want to make sure that uh, you know that you're not you're not sending a guy back out in harm's way from a physical standpoint. So I mean that that pretty much. Sums it up for preseason game number one. I think you the, the biggest thing you one takeaway from it is when you had the number ones out there, 12 plays, 73 yards and a touchdown offensively, three and out defensively. Can't ask much better than that. <laughs> you go on a long sustained drive and finish it, put it in the end zone. And then on the flip side of it, kick it off and your defense three and out. That's what you look for. That's what you hope for. But then when the number ones, a lot of number ones came out of there, and most of them did, it uh, it became a, a different football game. And honestly, Tampa Bay, I mean, um, they didn't play their tackles. They didn't play their quarterback. The interior of their offensive line started. I mean, it's the, the Bengals' defensive line, only uh, one projected starter was was on the football field. It's It, it was, it was a, a, you know, a mishmash of players, but the Bengals had more than number ones, obviously, particularly at the quarterback position. Uh, to start that football game than Tampa Bay decided to do. So, you know, you can, you can draw positives with that. Um, but then the flip side of it is didn't compete well enough, didn't meet expectations when those guys were pulled out of the football game. So there you go. Um, get right back to it. Day off on Sunday. 
and then uh, practice Monday and Tuesday, travel up to Chicago on Wednesday. Thursday is uh, controlled scrimmages up there and, 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 and get after it. Uh, uh, it's going to be, I think, better work than preseason game number two potentially, particularly if they have a period or two where they allow live tackling. So it's going to be thumb drill. It's going to be very competitive thumb drill. And this is where you start to make strides from preseason game number one to preseason game number two, particularly when the next two preseason games, there are controlled joint practices before both of those games. I think uh, I think that's a big plus. I think the Cincinnati Bengals are going to be ready physically and mentally to get off to a much faster start. And speaking of mentally, not only cleaning up a technique, penalties, man. Eight penalties for the Bengals. And the biggest one, obviously, fourth and long, pass interference penalty, put the ball at the three-yard line. Next snap, touchdown. Th- th- those are crushers. You can't You can't have those. A red zone penalty like that. Tampa Bay only had three penalties all all night. First one was huge, third and long um, pass interference. Joe Burrow takes advantage of it with T. Higgins for a for a touchdown. So Tampa Bay was more disciplined in the football game. They they won the line of scrimmage from a physical standpoint and mentally they were more disciplined. So the Bengals they have to clean up technique, get the physicality going, and uh, be more mentally sharp. I don't think there were tremendous number of mental errors in terms of missed assignments but man penalties a lot of them were were sloppy mental mistakes dave lapham here and every day i am grateful for my experience to have played professional football as a player i realize self-motivation leadership and appreciating your teammates are key at first star logistics you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team.